So in this lesson, we're going to explore the benefits and disadvantages of hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. So recall that hemodialysis involves the use of an external dialysis machine, and blood is taken out via an arteriovenous fistula, and it's passed through a semi-permeable membrane where urea and waste products diffuse out passively and beneficial ions diffuse in. Now contrast this with peritoneal dialysis. Whereas in hemodialysis, the semi-permeable membrane was your dialysis tubing, in peritoneal dialysis, the semi-permeable membrane is the peritoneal membrane. The peritoneum simply refers to the abdominal cavity. The abdominal cavity or peritoneum has its own membrane, which is semi-permeable, as you can see here, with the small molecules moving through, and it's known as a peritoneal membrane. Now, it's important to note that the peritoneum or the abdominal cavity has a rich network of blood vessels all over it. What we do in peritoneal dialysis is we inject the abdominal cavity with dialysis fluid. So this entire region here is going to be filled with dialysis fluid. So it contains no urea, all the beneficial concentrations of ions and glucose. Now overnight, while the individual sleeps, beneficial ions and glucose will diffuse passively into the circulation. At the same time, waste products such as urea will also diffuse into the peritoneal cavity alongside their concentration gradient. The next day, all this fluid is drained and hence the function of the kidney, which is filtration, has been correctly replaced. Now, it's very high yield to note this, that peritoneal dialysis is less effective than hemodialysis. And it's often reserved for milder cases of kidney failure. Let's have a quick overview of the benefits and disadvantages of each. So as we mentioned, hemodialysis is generally the more effective form of dialysis, and it consists of three five-hour sessions a week. The major disadvantage is fistula problems. So recall, in hemodialysis, you needed a surgery to connect an artery to a vein to allow blood to sufficiently exit and move through the dialysis machine. Now, that region where the surgery is performed can dilate and weaken. And hence, that dilation of the blood vessel is known as an aneurysm, and this can commonly occur with fistulas. At the same time, individuals on hemodialysis need to be on a very strict diet and fluid restriction. And that is simply because hemodialysis cannot fully replace the function of the kidney in controlling water balance. Now, with peritoneal dialysis, the main disadvantage is a risk of peritonitis, which occurs when we introduce microbes via the dialysis needle into the abdominal cavity. And this can cause infection and subsequent inflammation known as peritonitis. Now, the benefit is it can be performed while someone is sleeping, can be done at home, and it's often the easier technique for dialysis. So what do you need to know in your exams regarding hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis? Now, you're required to know where each process occurs, what the semi-permeable membrane is, what the dialysis fluid contains, and unique features of each form of dialysis. So as you see here, in hemodialysis, the flow of blood through the dialysis tubing is actually in the opposite direction to the flow of dialysis fluid. When this occurs, we call it countercurrent exchange, and it aims to maximize the diffusion of waste products out of the blood and into the dialysis fluid. And that is an overview of hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis.